I'm Chuck Dorsett for Weaver Leather Craft, and we are going to make a simple phone holster or case. Not sure which way to go there, but we're going to make one. Cool part here, this is a simple project. We can knock this out in an evening. All right, anything I use in this video, weaverleathercraft.com or check below. We've got links there. Going to take you straight to our website. So let's step over here, take a look at our pattern. This pattern's going to look complicated, but it really isn't. We're going to work from a center line out. That's going to make everything very easy. First digital pick. Here's my phone. I've got an iPhone 8. So therefore, I'm three wide, six tall, by about, maybe a little bit more, half inch thickness. Now, again, iPhone with an otter case. So much thicker than just a standard phone. You're going to have to work these dimensions a little bit. But let's go with my phone, get a good idea. So let's start right here. Let's take a piece of paper, copy paper, fold that in half. Now we've got a center line. Let's lay in our phone, draw that in. Now we know our phone dimensions. So on my phone, we've got three inches wide. So what I'm going to do, let's work down here in our taper. Then we'll build the ears onto that measurement. So right here, we're working in halves. So therefore, three inches, half of that. Let's come out one and a half inches. There's our phone. Then let's come out one half of an inch to our stitch line. Let's go a quarter of an inch from there. So therefore, there's our outside dimensions, four and a half. In fact, let's jump over to a digital pick. Then we'll explain the ears. So overall height, five and three quarters of an inch. Overall width, five and three quarters of an inch. Our taper, four and a half inches. Our oblongs are both one and a half inches. Okay, so we've got that down. Now, we know where our stitch line is. So therefore, let's take that, just extend that line up. That brings us right to this stitch line. So technically, there's our pocket right there that's going to fit our phone. From that, let's measure out one quarter of an inch. We're going to drop in our oblong, which is about one quarter of an inch, one quarter and one quarter. That brings us to our edge. Up here, one quarter, one quarter. So therefore, we know exactly where our top line is. Now, I've got this set. I've got, a, I've got it set to where about an inch of my phone's going to hang out. So at our bottom, one half of an inch out to our stitch, and then one quarter of an inch from there. So therefore, everything works out pretty easily. Now, when we cut this, since we've worked in halves, what I'm going to do so I'm going to bend my pattern over. Now let's cut that pattern. So therefore, everything is very symmetrical, including our oblong. So there's our pattern. Now, one more point. Again, I'm not big on that quarter of an inch. Well, it looks good in this situation. But say we want to dress that up a little bit. Say this is going to be for the office. All I have to do, I don't have to change my dimensions. Let's just drop one eighth of an inch from our three sides and there, now we have our one eighth of an inch from our edge to our stitch line. So easy enough. Let's take our pattern. Let's jump over to our main table, cut some leather. We're going to do this a little bit differently. We're going to cut our face panel to size. Then we're going to overcut our back panel. We'll lay those together. So therefore, when we trim this, notice how clean that trimmed edge is. In fact, same thing over here. We can cut these both to size and try to meet those edges. But it's never going to be as clean as this. You'll see exactly what I'm talking about. So our leather here, love this leather. This is our water buffalo. It's a four to five ounce, very rustic, very distressed. It's got some body, but it's also a little bit supple. Here's the best part for us crafters. This is a very affordable piece of leather. So let's do this. Let's start right here. And on this piece, let's mark to size. Good. Easy to mark, easy to measure. Okay. With this, I'm going to cut my edges. But what I tend to like to do, let's make sure we're, we're square here. So I'm going to square right along my bottom line for both the outside cuts up here and both the cuts down here. And now we're assured that everything is square. So now, really, I just have to cut between, and I'll cut across my throat.
Okay, everything's square. Let's do the same thing down here. Let's square along that edge. Good. Now, for our round corners, let's just make a bunch of small cuts instead of trying to cut that round. And good. Now, perfectly rounded? No, but they look pretty good if we don't have a round corner tool. And I don't have one this size. So, over here, let's drop this in. And let's give this maybe about a quarter of an inch, maybe half of an inch, all the way around. And let's cut that out. Okay, I'm going to reset here. Let's get some glue out and glue these two pieces together. We're going to use a white glue. We just need to tack this together long enough to get a stitch in. But at the same time, we've got a quarter of an inch there. So let's get a good glue line. I'm going to start right at the top of both bends and come all the way around. Okay, that looks good. Now again, we're just tacking to hold this together for us to drop in a stitch. So let's bring this over, drop that in, good. Let's take our quartz, it's good weight. Let's give that a few minutes to set. About 10 minutes and our glue is set well. So, let's use our main body as our straight edge. New blade every time, but at the same time, if you want to use a straight edge over here on our straight lines, you absolutely can. Okay, so look at that nice, clean, square edge. Let's mark for our oblongs. In fact, now, I'm not sure which is face up, but it doesn't really matter. Both sides look good. There we go. Let's step over to our punch table, drop in our oblongs. One and a half inch is a standard belt width. We're going to go with that, but I tend to like to go a little bit longer. In this situation, this leather's going to soften a little bit. So therefore, belt's going to move through it nicely, but it's still going to be a little bit snug. So let's stick with one and a half. If you want to extend that, just extend your measurements. Good. Very nice thus far. Let's step back to our main table and let's drop in a groove line. I use a groover on every line, except in this situation. With this leather, if we use our groover, what's going to happen is we've got that big wide line. That's almost an eighth of an inch thick. So therefore, we run the risk of our chisel being a little squirrely. So let's go with a wing divider. Good. Now we've got a very tight line. It's going to make our stitch line look very consistent. So with this, let's start right here, just to the right of our oblong. And I'm going to run all the way around to just the left side of the other oblong. And up to there. Now let's take our wing divider, drop that inside of our oblong, and let's see if these lines match up. And they do nicely. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Good. Looks good thus far. Let's step over to our punch table, drop in our chisel line. Let's use our five millimeter diamond chisel. That's going to look really good on this. So what I want to do is I'm going to start right in my center, roughly, at my bottom. Then I'm going to work my way up around and stop just as I get back to my chisel line. On my curves, what I want to do is use my two tine. I'm going to put the first tine in the last hole, mark, so now I can bring that second in and it's going to be a little tighter curve. Now let's do this. Tight curve, let's mark and mark again. That is going to fit nicely. So yes, let's use our single tine. 
And that looks very good. Okay, I'm gonna do the same thing in the other direction. And our last hole, okay, looks nice and consistent. Let's step over, drop in a stitch line, and we're done. We're going to use a basic saddler stitch, but we're gonna start in an odd place. So first off, sewing pony, big help. Now this is made with an arm on it, so we can sit on it. But I like to stand while I'm sewing. I've got better vision. But secondly, I've got more upper body strength. Now on our thread, I love this nice prominent bright white. So we're gonna go with the white 0.8 millimeter Ritza. And right here, the smallest of the John James. This is the number 18, and I love this. Now for distance, we need about four times our length because we're going through a little bit more than a quarter of an inch, or I'm sorry, an eighth of an inch, a little less than a quarter. So let's do this. We're gonna start on our main chisel line, on our outside line, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna sew inward. We'll loop our oblong, we'll go around and we'll do the same thing on the other side. Now over there, we'll come back around and we'll hide our knot right in there. It's gonna work nicely. So. We have got a great video on hand sewing. Again, no pun intended, but all the ins and outs of sewing. But we're just gonna do a basic saddlers. So, this is easy to get confused because our, our tendency is to go this direction. But let's come around this way. And there we've got about 10 stitches. That is looking good already. I love that diamond chisel. All right, so I'm gonna sew all the way around. Let's hide our knot. Now, hand sewing. It's not as fast as a machine, but a couple of big points. First off, this is one to $3,000 this side of a machine. Secondly, we can hand sew on our kitchen table. And look at that, looks just like a machine stitch. All right, so let's come down to our last hole before we cross back over to our main stitch line. Well, that looks good thus far. Let's step over to our quartz and hide our knot. Let's see if we can pull this off. Now, our tendency is to keep sewing straight. That's gonna make a V at the bottom of that. So let's come up one hole. So therefore, we complete the circle, just like on the other side. So let's take one needle. We don't have glue in here. So let's take one needle, get in that hole, and let's see if we can come through one ply. And we did, nice. Let's pull that through. And same thing on the back side. So what I'm going to do is go to that same hole. Let's go through one ply. Good. Let's pull that through. Now let's give both sides a tug separately. Draw those down. Good. It's a little further out than I would like. It's not exactly the spacing, but you know what? We're okay. I don't think anybody's ever going to see that. So let's do this. Simple square knot. But what I want to do is I'm going to pull one thread through my oblong. All right. So right over left, circle around. Let's run our left down through our hole and pull that good and tight. Okay, now this is still our left. So let's come back through. Now let's go left over right, circle around, and then we're gonna pass that back through and tighten that down. Okay, so we've got a good square knot down in there. Now to cut our thread, again, we rarely use, let's extend that, we rarely use this part of our blade. So I'm gonna put this down in there and I'm just gonna pull that thread across the blade. There we go, okay. Well that knot is not even visible. One last step and we're done. Let's step over to our punch table, hammer down our stitch line and we are done with this beautiful phone case. When I say hammer down our stitch line, I really mean tamp down our stitch line. We don't want to hit this so hard that we ding the leather. But what's going to happen? Normally, with a good groove, it's going to sink that thread down into the groove. But right here, 
It's going to spread that thread out because notice as we move through the leather, this becomes discolored. So when we hammer this down, it's going to bring that white back out, but it's also going to close our holes down a little bit. Now you can see where I use this mallet. So let's concentrate on using this side on our stitch line. Notice the difference. It's a little bit brighter, a little bit cleaner, and in all honesty, to me, it looks a little more consistent. Well, that looks good to me. What a great project. Well, let's see how it fits. Now, I got a rubber case on my phone, but let's see. Oh, look at that. Right down to the bottom. That is beautiful. Now, as I draw the phone out, push it in, it's going to loosen up a little bit, but right here, too our wings, our belt loops. When we draw a belt through that, that's going to draw this leather down. So it's going to keep it in there. It's going to be very secure. It's protected. And you know what? Best part, it is absolutely handmade. Another project fun to make, and it's going to be fun to wear for years to come. I hope every phone case or holster you make is spot on beautiful. Good luck with your project. <music>